What's going on gamers? Today we're going to be adding the Citizens plugin onto our Apex servers. But before we get into the tutorial, don't forget to subscribe to the official Apex channel and like this video. One of the best things about a Minecraft server is being able to customize it past vanilla Minecraft. Adding plugins is just a way to do it, and a great way to bring your server to life is with Citizens. A Minecraft plugin that enables a creation of NPCs, non-player characters, into your server. Some use it for design, as you can bring NPCs in the game as your skin, your friends, or maybe even Notch or Harrowbrine. Some use NPCs as shops, information providers, or teleporters. This plugin is a great asset, and we're going to be teaching you how to get it on your server. Our first step in installing Citizens is making sure that we stop our server before changing any files. And once our servers come to a full stop, we can go ahead and scroll down to the jar selection part of the page. Now what we're looking for here is to make sure that our jar is either on bucket, spigot, or paper. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we can go ahead and jump into the plugins list tab on the left here. From the plugins list tab, you can go ahead and type in the search bar C-I-T-I-Z-E-N-S and then hit enter. And then from there, you're going to see citizens pop up, which is what you want. Go ahead and click on that. And make sure that you check the version of citizens or you cross check it with the plugin version. They're separated from the left and the right, the left being the Minecraft version of the server, and then the right being the plugin version. From here, what you want to do is make sure that you get the version for your server. Ours is a 1.11 and make sure that you get the right plugin version. We're gonna be grabbing this 2.0.24. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the version part of the page. Now, 2.0.24 is the latest release. Let's go ahead and click on that, and then hit install. Installing Vault is gonna work the exact same way that Citizens does. All you need to do is in the plugin page, make sure that you search for Vault, and then repeat the steps for Vault. As you can see, we have Citizens installed, as indicated by all these options to remove the plugin. All we need to do from here is make sure that we head back to the main page by scrolling all the way up and clicking on the name of our server. From here, you can either start or restart your server to get it up and running. Once your server is up and running, you can check on the plugin installation by jumping into console and then typing in PL in the text chat at the bottom and then hitting enter. As you can see, we have one plugin installed and it is Citizens, meaning we have successfully installed Citizens. But don't forget to install Vault or else you won't be able to use certain features from Citizens. The Vault installation process is almost identical. You stop your server, jump into the plugin list, then you search up your plugin, V-A-U-L-T, and then hit enter. You get your Vault plugin, and then you look for the version that's gonna be compatible with your Minecraft server version, and then go ahead and click install. Very similar process to installing Citizens, and it's going to be the same way when we install Citizens through the FDP web panel that Apex offers. Vault is going to be installed in a similar process to installing Citizens through the FDP web panel. And now I'm going to show you how to install plugins through the Apex FDP web panel. All you need to do is head to the plugin list and then make sure to search up your plugin. And then hit enter to pull up the plugin, and then go ahead and jump to the plugin page. From here, you're going to want to scroll down and head to the official plugin web page and go to the moved site. When you get to this page, don't forget that you need to install dependencies the same way you install other dependencies like Vault. From their official Spigot page, you're going to want to scroll down past this. It says buy now, but you don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can get it for free because this is just to support the plugin creator. What you really want to do to install the plugin is scroll down until you find this part of a page. You're going to see a hyperlink that says for free here. Go ahead and click on that link. And then all you have to do is download the latest jar as it's going to work on any version of Minecraft you use it for. All you need to do is keep it. And then once it's saved, you can go ahead and click and drag it onto a folder that you're using for this specific purpose, so you know where it is later. Go ahead and drop that into the folder, and then do the same thing for Vault. Our first step in installing through the Apex FTP web panel is making sure that our server is at a full stop. Once your server's stopped, you can go ahead and jump into FTP file access, log in, 
and then head to the plugins folder. Once you're in the plugins folder, you're going to want to go ahead and jump into the upload part of the page and then open up the folder where you have your plugins. Make sure to highlight both of those jars and drop them into the part of the page where it says drop files here to upload. Once both of your plugins have uploaded 100%, two out of two files, you can go ahead and head back to the top of the page and click on the name of your server. Once you're back at the main Multicraft page, you can either start or restart your server to make sure that those plugins are installed. And once your server has fully started, you can go ahead and jump into console and check if you have successfully installed your plugins by typing PL. And as you can see here, we have Vault and we have Citizens installed on our server. Now I'm gonna show you how to fully utilize Citizens. Now there's almost an unlimited number of things you can do with Citizens, but first I'm gonna show you how to create one. Go ahead and type slash NPC create, and then type a name. For today's purpose, we're just gonna go ahead and name it TEST test. Now it's gonna drop a citizen in the direction that you're looking. And there's also a few things that you can do with citizens once you've created them. For example, if I point at this citizen and I type slash NPC and then look, I can have it set so that test looks at me whenever I am nearby. And then you can also configure it to set how far or how near you need to be for him to look at you. Another thing that you can do is change the skin. So maybe you don't really want Dr. Strange as your NPC. You can type slash NPC skin dirt and it'll change it to a skin that's obviously modeled after a dirt block. For example, you don't have to have it this way, but it's definitely something that you can do. Let's say that with this citizen, you don't really like the name tests and you just wanted to run some stuff and see how citizens worked. But now that you know you really like this citizen, you can go ahead and rename it. You can type in slash NPC and then rename and then name it something like shop keeper. Once you hit enter, it's obviously going to rename it to shopkeeper. Let's say that you have a bunch of NPCs next to each other. Maybe I'm kind of far away and my cursor is pointing in the middle. Maybe it's more towards that one and I want to be changing stuff with a shopkeeper. If I want to specifically select one NPC to edit or change, I can type slash NPC select and then hit enter while I'm sure my cursor is over the correct NPC and then hit enter. And now it's going to select shopkeeper. So wherever my cursor is pointed, it's going to do the edits. Let's say for this NPC specifically, I want to rename it. Let's go ahead and type slash NPC and then rename shop keeper because I just like the space in the middle and then hit enter. And it's going to make sure that I change this NPC as opposed to this one, which I had my cursor pointed at. But basically, those are some commands that you can get more in depth with or more familiar with with some links that we will leave under the video. Citizens can be used for a variety of different tasks. Some tasks you can have NPCs set up for as shopkeepers. NPCs can be used as shopkeepers, meaning that players can buy or sell items to them depending on server prices that you've set up using a separate shop plugin. Perhaps you want an NPC to be used with various questing plugins that will allow you to have them perform different duties or dialogue related to a quest. You can also just have them set up as decoration, like I have these balcony characters set up here. Or you can have NPCs set up as info boards. Some servers may use NPCs to relay information to a player or to perform specific commands. But these are by no means the only things you can do with citizens. You can set up NPCs to do a huge number of things but these are just a few ideas to inform of common usage. In conclusion, nearly every server you play on, you'll probably see NPCs in some form with endless possibilities. Citizens is a plugin that can fit into almost any server, whether you're using it for decoration, information, questing, or one of the many, many other uses. Citizens is the perfect way to liven up your gameplay experience. But remember, this plugin is only compatible with bucket, spigot, or paper servers. You're not gonna be able to use it on modded Minecraft or vanilla. You can find a guide on changing your server version or your server jar under the video.
Well folks, that's all I've got for you today. I want to thank you for watching this tutorial and I want to thank you for using an Apex server. And as always, I hope you have lots of fun.